Wow, that was a really fascinating talk, um, but it was pretty intense. So I'm going to change up the gears right now. Um, I must say there seems to be a lot of intelligent people here today, and I find that very intimidating. Um, so I just want to get an idea of what kind of people we have here today. Um, does anybody here, put it, show hands, work in production? Anyone here work in production? There's quite a few of you, okay. Uh, what about post-production specifically? Anyone? Oh, one guy there. Um, anyone work in visual effects? No? That's fantastic, because now I won't be preaching to the choir. Um, I'm going to get started. Yep, my name's Justin Stahl. I'm from Zerpli, the world's top uh, production pl talent platform for film, games, and VR. And um, I'm the community manager, which means I'm really good at sending emails. That's basically my job, if you had to sum up in one sentence. Um, but I'm also one of the co-founders of Zerpli, and we've been working with this for five years now. So I'm going to share a little bit about our journey, um, what we've been building, and how we think it's going to help um, both talent and studios to be more efficient and create awesome work. Great. OK. Oh, yeah. Nice little video there. Going into our journey, um, we, we started in 2011. Um, is anybody here, actually, another show of hands, um, heard of Zerpli before? Oh, great. There's our developers heard of us. That's awesome. Um, well, yeah, basically, we, we started in 2011. And um, our vision was that we wanted to help people connect and collaborate. Um, because we thought that a lot of the existing professional networks out there, it was basically just your existing network. It was your existing Rolodex. It was hard to discover new people and collaborate. And if you, you know, if you work in film, if you work in the web industry, any kind of creative industry, you're always looking for new people to collaborate with, new talent that um, maybe have a skill set that you don't have. And so you need that discovery element. So we wanted to create a platform that was open. You could um, discover great talent, see their work, connect, and collaborate. So that was our big overarching vision. And in 2011, we were just kind of these newbies. We didn't really know how to set up a company and do a startup. And so we did that really stupid thing that a lot of startups do is we try to build it for everybody. We're like, yeah, we're going to build a professional network that's going to be better than LinkedIn. And everybody's going to love it. And everybody's going to use it. Um, and we slowly realized that we needed to focus on a target group. And in 2013, we teamed up with a guy who was a senior animator. He's been working in the visual effects industry for 17 years, a guy called James Bennett, who is our chief creative lead. What a title. What a man. And um, we, we moved into a talent community, which is a curated community of top-tier artists, engineers, people in management. And so we went from an open platform to an invite-only platform. And since then, we've been thinking, right, well, our original vision isn't just to have a place where people share awesome work, like the concept art they did on Star Wars or the modeling work they did on How to Train Your Dragon. We also want to help people find opportunities to find work, because um, ultimately, we're building this for the creative. We're building it for the artist, the engineer. And so this year, we've really moved into kind of the final phase of our original vision, which is to create a talent marketplace. So we want to be a place that fosters connections, that fosters collaborations, where the artists that are really talented, that they stay in work, that they find great jobs, that they create awesome um, projects and work on great shows. So I'm going to tell you a little bit how we do that. Um, but first off, why are we focusing on the production um, industry? Well, you might not know this, but in the last 10 years, the, there's been a doubling of turnover of staff in the production industries. And when we're talking about production, we're talking about entertainment, games, and marketing. And right now, there's $30 billion spent a year on recruiting. And I don't know about you, but I think that figure is absolutely crazy. And you don't have to look too much into the industry to realize that it's super inefficient. And the ways that recruiting is done today is just outdated and cumbersome and just really dumb. I mean, if you had to look at a lot of these uh, companies and studios and see how they do things, they're doing things the same way they were doing them 15 years ago, before we started having all of this cloud technology and tools that we have available today. So just to look at the VFX industry in specific, as you probably know, there's more visual effects every day now. You're seeing it in movies, seeing it in games, seeing it in commercials. Even theme parks are using visual effects. There's just been a massive exponential growth in visual effects. But at the same time, there's also more VFX studios. Um, you might not know about the fact that there's tax breaks in different countries, uh, countries like Canada, the UK, even places like Malaysia now, offering tax breaks to start studios to try and attract 
jobs and industries to their country. And what this has led to is that a lot of the work is moving and shifting from traditional bases like um, Los Angeles and San Francisco. They're now moving their offices and studios up to Vancouver, to Montreal, London, places like that. And it's really causing a lot of competition in the market for providing visual effects for shows. And because of this, of course, it's tighter budgets. Everybody's trying to undercut each other. Um, studios in LA are competing with studios in India. And so you can just imagine the price war that is taking place. And the effect of this is that people are no longer being hired on a full-time basis. Uh, the days of working for a studio for 15 years are, are long gone. Now, pretty much most of the artists, they're lucky if they work at the same place for a year. They're probably gonna be working for three months or sometimes even smaller stints where they'll be called in at crunch time and maybe working on a two-week project. So we're really moving, as is the case in a lot of industries in the world, to a gig-based economy. And to couple that with, with to couple with that, you're also seeing compressed schedules. Now, a lot of these studios, they've they're, got, got shareholders that want to see movies being pumped out all the time. So they're going from producing maybe one or two feature films a year to producing five, six uh, films. And because of that, they have all these schedule dates that they have to meet. And so you're seeing an increase in crunch time. And so a lot of these guys that are working in feature film, that are working in games, they're constantly working late hours, long hours, and living in a perpetual state of insecurity about their job because they got their head down working on this show and they know that next week they're out of a job. And then they have to start the process all over again. They have to go out and look out for a, a new job, even though they might be one of the most talented people in the industry, you know, producing the animation for King Kong or Godzilla, all of these modern uh, classics, um, they're still struggling to find work. And we think that's wrong. So we want to help these guys. And because of these crunch times, there's, there's all this extra talent that is needed. Sometimes it, you can go right down to the wire. I mean, if we take an example of um, the Hobbit movies that are always released at Christmas time or Lord of the Rings, um, quite often they'll have to call in guys in late November and December just to get the film ready. So guys will be called in last minute. And you can just imagine the fees that are charged for agencies to help them find talent. So there's a massive need for talent. And so what we want to do is we want to create a talent matchmaking service. Now, I want to use just a, a little fun illustration here. The old way of doing things was a, a really cumbersome way of doing things. It was like fishing in a massive sea. And basically what the recruiter would do is they would broadcast their opportunities. They put up a job post on LinkedIn, maybe. They would go through their database of old emails and send out you know, a thousand emails and using their Excel sheets and hope that they get some responses. Now, out of those maybe 100 responses they get, they might find that 90% of them are not qualified. Um, maybe an, a further 5% are not available. And so they would just end up with a couple people that fit the bill. Now, the difference with Zerpli is that we pre-vet everybody that comes onto our community. So everybody that is on Zerpli is top tier. They've worked on top titles, AAA games, feature films. They've worked at the best studios. They're battle-hard and they're ready to go to, to, go, to, go to work. Um, so when a recruiter comes on and they see that this guy is available in their location, they know that they can hire them. They can skip a massive part of that screening process, making it more efficient and saving them a stack of money. Here's the old way. Now, um, talking to recruiters, I was really shocked to find how they screen people. Um, basically, I mean, they might get a PDF with a cover letter. They might get a, um, a link to the LinkedIn so they can check out the resume. Then they have to go to IMDB and check out their credits to verify that they've actually worked on big titles. And then they might go to YouTube or Vimeo to see what their reel looks like. And then to accompany that, they might have a PDF so they can read what they actually did in every single shot. Now they end up with like 20 tabs open on their Chrome. And I don't need to tell you how in inefficient that is when you're doing that for 100 applicants. That's a very cumbersome activity. So what we have done is a new way is we brought everything into Zerpli. So they've got their resume, they've got their credits, everything is verified, they got their showreel, and their breakdown is synced to the actual shot. So as you're watching it, you can see exactly what they've done on that shot. You can see what tools they've used, they can see what processes they did. And so you can get your um, VFX supervisor or your, your lead animator or whoever you're hiring for, and they can go in and check out and say, yeah, this guy, he, he knows what he's doing. He's got the goods, we can hire him today. So of course, recruiters love this. And we're calling this talent on demand. 
we're basically removing any barriers between the talent and the recruiter, where they can just go in, see the talent, send them a message, send them an inquiry, find out their availability. And we're finding that the profiles on, on Zerpli are four times more complete uh, compared to LinkedIn. It's because people love to use Zerpli. It's really easy to add their IMDb BD credits. It's really easy to add their Vimeo reels, their YouTube reels, add a, add a breakdown notes. And of course, the recruiters love us because they're saving like 40% of their time in the week. And it just takes seconds to discover top quality available talent, finding better talent faster. And all of these images in the background is work from people that are on our network. And one of these guys right here, this is our uh, co-founder here, James. Uh, he's been working in the animation industry for 17 years. He worked on titles like Avatar, The Hobbit, Iron Man 2, How to Train Your Dragon 2, studios like you know, Lucasfilm, DreamWorks, Weta Digital. So he has a lot of experience and we've been able to draw on that experience, his experience from the industry of what it's like to be an artist to create this bespoke platform that works both for the artist and the studio. So here's our team. The reason why I've been invited here today is because we have an office here in Tallinn at Garage 48 and uh, we have a couple of our developers here. And our headquarters is actually in San Francisco. So we've been able to liaise with a lot of the studios out there, um, guys like DreamWorks and Lucasfilm and really just hear what their pain points are and how we can serve them. So our tools have really been built with the studios in mind and with the artists in mind. And our customers, as you can see, we already have a lot of customers. Um, maybe you're not familiar with some of these names, but they've worked on films like, you know, the Twilight Saga, um, the Avengers film, the Halo franchise, um, you know, all of the Marvel titles, um, just a, a, a lot of really top tier studios that are working with us. And our members have worked at pretty much every game studio, every um, film studio that you can think about. Guys like Blizzard, Ubisoft, I mean, you can read them yourself there. So it's really taking off. And if you uh, know somebody that might be interested, if it's hiring or being a part of the platform, you can join the revolution. Uh, you can apply on zerpli.com or you can, if you're just interested as a fan, you want to see some artwork, you want to see some cool stuff being made, you can follow us on at Zerpli or subscribe to our industry blog, industry.zerpli.com. Okay, great. I got two minutes and 40 seconds left. So if there's any questions, there's a guy at the back there. Sorry? Okay. Do you understand the right that uh, it's mostly for freelance? So you, this community is based on mostly freelance? It's all kind of contract type. So it could be a full-time gig or it could be a commission. So there's also guys, you can set your availability to according to whatever you're looking for. So it can even be guys that may be full-time at say Pixar and they want to do some moonlighting work. Maybe they want to do a bit of commission on the weekend, uh, do a bit of keyframe animation or whatever that might be. So. There's lots of different opportunities. So we're not just working with the major studios, but also maybe somebody that's producing an Indiegogo short film and they want to hire in some, uh, some guns to help out with that. There's another guy at the back. Just out of curiosity, how much traction do you get among the VR people? The VR people, as you know, is um, a very, very new industry. Um, but we're seeing more and more studios approaching us to come onto the platform because if you've worked in both games and film, you're like the perfect candidate to work in kind of the art departments for VR because you both understand the, the storytelling element, but you also understand kind of the, the level design dynamic as well. Um, so a lot of the guys that have done that who have crossovered between the industries, they're now going into VR because there's a lot of lucrative opportunities and as you know, in Silicon Valley, they're throwing a lot of money at the VR industry right now. So we're really keeping our um, finger on the pulse of that industry, and we're excited about wh where that industry is going, for sure. You can ask me more if, after if you like. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Yeah. I, so, what are the biggest biggest challenges for you? What do you find, like, as a as a company, as a really company, like a startup? What yeah. are the challenges? I think our challenges are the same for pretty much every startup that's trying to disrupt um, a big industry. Is that you're trying to change behaviors. So, a lot of guys 
they're, they're set in their ways. They're used to recruiting a certain way. And so when you come with a new tool, a new way of doing things, um, especially a recruiter, they might, it might make them insecure because they're thinking like, hey, hang on a minute, are you trying to replace me? So we're, we're trying to, we have to educate people how we work and that is actually a complement to what they're doing and trying to make them more efficient. So it's, it's definitely that educational side that is the challenge. Okay, and why did you choose uh, Silicon Valley, not like LA? Is it uh, like for your base, why that? Yeah, well, as I said in the story is when we started, we weren't actually focusing purely on production. It's something that we stumbled upon by chance and we thought, wow, what we're building actually fits perfectly for this industry. But it's actually been a really great place because there, there are a lot of um, post-production houses in the Bay Area. Um, if quite a few of those companies that we showed are actually in the Bay Area. So it's been a really great testing ground for us to work with a lot of local studios there. Okay, one final comment. Uh, do you see that when maybe LinkedIn one day will be more crowded with other stuff, like too crowded, you could be the perfect replacement like for other kind of recruiting too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think what we have built works better for people with visually driven portfolios. Um, and uh, we're really excited to see how this talent marketplace is going to take off, where you can be booked, the, the transaction can happen on the site, um, and uh, really just bringing you closer to the actual studios that you want to work with. So it's everything's curated. You're not going to get spammed by all of these agencies. There's no agencies on our site. You know, you go straight to the studios. There's no middleman involved. And I think that's something that the artists really appreciate. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.